For some people, they may have everything um, externally that they need and they desire. But even just at the age of 30 years old or 20 years old, um, they get sick. Some people may work a lot, um, really spend a lot of time at their job, but they don't have any free time because they're so busy trying to make money. And as they get a bit older, then the body deteriorates very quickly. They try to look after their body, to nurse it, and um, some people can take care of it um, and overcome their illnesses, and others can't. It depends on our karma as well. And so there was a, a husband and wife who had been working um, at their job for 50 years, um, spending all of their time doing their work. But they decided um, when they were old to give uh, their work over to their grandchildren so that they would be able to uh, go and travel around. But even though they'd accumulated all this money and they had plans to travel, um, sickness arose in their body this body being a sankhara, something that's uh, conditioned. Um, so it is of the nature to become sick. So all the parts of our bodies can develop illnesses. Our bones, for instance, um, can get many different uh, illnesses in them. So therefore all of us should be heedful um, to use this opportunity that we have, um, having bodies that are still energetic and strong. We take them to cultivate merit, to listen to the Dhamma. And uh, this cultivation of merit, um, the act of creating that, it's like traveling from one point to another point. So say we had to pass over some water pass over a stretch of sea. So if we just have uh, merit, then, and uh, sila as well, and it's like we've got a rowboat and we have to row that along in the sea and it's quite slow going. Um, but if we practice further and we have samadhi, um, then it's like if we get a motor for the boat and we can go along faster than before. We're able to reach the shores of peace faster. Uh, but having wisdom, it's like we get in an airplane and we're able to uh, get there very quickly. So this wisdom is the fastest vehicle that can take us to peace. So the path of uh, dana, sila, and bhavana, the generosity, virtue, and wisdom is something that all of us need to do. At the Buddha's time, there was a, a son of a very wealthy family called Yasa, and he got weary with the cycle of sangsara. Externally, he had great amounts of wealth, and internally, he had a lot of barami. And so the job that he had in a previous life was to burn the bodies of people who didn't have any family. There was no one to do the funeral rites for them, so he would do that. He would cremate them. Uh, and in doing that... Uh, he cultivated the barami of becoming weary with the body. And so a nimitta uh, arose following this uh, cause and condition that he had in his previous life and was able to see the people around him as uh, being frightful, as just being corpses. After seeing that and gaining this weariness with the world, 
he tried to find a place of peace because he saw that there was just confusion and chaos within his heart. There was no peace there. And the peace that he was after was more than what most people uh, desired in their life. Everything he had externally, uh, but internally his mind was still um, attached. He did, however, um, gain some amount of samadhi, even though he was lost in worldly things his mind was still quite collected, collected enough for it to be able at times to separate out from the sensations that it experienced. Um, but when the samadhi left, then the sensations came up and the mind attached to them and creating great confusion and disturbance in his heart. And then he saw this, he saw the suffering of that, he was able to have some insight into the first noble truth. So he left uh, the mansion that he lived in and walked following uh, his old good karma that he had created. And this led him to the deer park where the Buddha was. It was late at night, uh, but the Buddha knew that he was coming and was doing walking meditation, waiting for him. And as he approached, he called out as that yasa and said that here it's not confused. And here things aren't horrible. So the Buddha had this knowledge to know that he was coming. Yasa, having heard the Buddha call him like this, um, developed great faith. Um, the sata in his heart was flowing over. And the Buddha gave him a teaching. He taught him about sila, about sacrifice and giving. And this was something that he was already very familiar with. And he had this great wealth, but he was also willing to give away his possessions. There was wealth uh, externally, but he also had a certain amount of internal wealth as well. And so he had uh, this dana barami. He liked to uh, give things away and he wasn't attached to them. And he could see uh, that um, being attached to this external wealth was just a cause of suffering. His sila was also very full. And he had developed this uh, before. And so when the Buddha taught him about uh, sila dhamma, this quality of morality, of uh, ethical conduct, um, he had already established that in his heart. And he already knew that being without virtue is a cause of chaos in our lives. So he was already, already very firm in his practice of sila. His actions of body and speech uh, were peaceful already, but this just left his heart, which was yet still very stirred up. The Buddha then taught about the benefits of virtue, which is heaven. But we can understand that heaven can arise in the heart at this very moment. Even though we are in human bodies, heaven can still be present within our hearts. But most people are in a state of internal confusion and disturbance. So we see that there are many different kinds of people, just like there are many different types of food. And most people are very stirred up. There's a lot of greed, hatred, and delusion within them. But if we practice, uh, then we become humans, both in body and in mind. So we see that the arising or the birth of a human, it's actually something very difficult to take place. And a simile that the Buddha gave to describe just how difficult this is, how rare an occurrence it is, is like a blind turtle who is swimming in the great ocean. And floating on the water is a piece of bamboo that has a single hole in it. 
Now this turtle surfaces once every 100 years and the chance of that turtle surfacing and sticking its head through the hole in that piece of bamboo is the same chance of gaining a human birth. So it's something very rare, something difficult to come by. And what comparison could we use in modern times? Well, perhaps it would be like a child who is at a computer and they're on the internet um, trying to get into a well-protected website that has information in it. Um, it's confidential information. And so there's a password there and the child is tapping away at the keyboard trying to get the right password. And so the chance of that child actually typing in the right password um, is the same chance of us gaining a human birth. But just as that password is covering over the information there in that website, so too the chelases, they close over our hearts, stopping them from gaining knowledge, causing them to become disturbed and unsettled. And so someone who is living their life as a true human uh, also engages in right livelihood. So they don't go and get drunk as well. They don't gamble. They don't associate with unwholesome people. And even though this last aspect, it's not actually wrong or it's not uh, going against any of the five precepts, uh, but doing it causes us to live lives with a lot of suffering, a lot of difficulty. And we see that all over the place, how bad friends can lead us to harm. So the birth of a true human is something very difficult. So the Buddha taught uh, yasa, how to develop from the state of a human into a deva, how to reach the heaven world. So his uh, sila was already full. And then the Buddha taught about the happiness of the heaven, which is the happiness we get from the merit of dana and sila, this joy um, within our hearts. That itself is heaven. But even though there is this great happiness, it's still something that's not sure. It's inconstant. So we can just look at these bodies and see how, even though the body may be in good health now, it may be very comfortable, it's not sure, and it's very changeable. In not long, suffering can arise in the body. And the suffering is something that's very difficult to endure. So even though now they may be strong, in not long, these bodies do need to deteriorate. So we can ask ourselves, well, are they really comfortable? Do they give us ease? Well, they may be doing so now, but that won't last for very long. We may not be feeling much pain now, but the pain will come soon enough. Right now, our bones may be strong, our eyes may see very clearly, but little by little, they are deteriorating. And soon enough, we may try to walk and we just won't be able to. We may try to do the things that we once could, but we can't anymore. When we get over the age of 60, then we see this really clearly. So when I was 30 years old, I could walk without difficulty, walk very long distances. But now just walking for five and 10 minutes, it's something that's very difficult for me to do. So the deterioration of the body happens in this way. When I was younger, I went to Sri Lanka and we, a group of us climbed up Adam's Peak. And there was a man who came up with us who was 60 years old and he weighed 80 kilograms. And um, he had a hard time trying to get up. 
So the top of Adam's Peak is where there is a Buddha's footprint. There's a deva that resides at the top. And this deva invited the Buddha to come to the mountain. And the Buddha left a footprint there at the top. Uh, but this man, he wasn't able to go up. So I tried my best to get up, and I eventually did, but it was really difficult. And people in the party said that they hadn't experienced any difficulty like that. We had to wake up at 4 a.m., and we started climbing at 6 a.m. It took us maybe five or five and a half hours. There was uh, one very large monk who went up with us, but he just couldn't make it to the top. And there were two lay people who uh, passed out on the way. But now there is a Sri Lankan layman who has a very meritorious heart, and he's uh, worked and offered the funds uh, for the building of a road up to the top of the peak. And he invited me uh, to go. He asked if I've ever been before. And I said that I had, and he invited me to go again uh, using the road that he had built. And so in not long, I'll probably travel to Sri Lanka to go up to the top of Adam's Peak again. So when we're not yet old, we don't know really the suffering of the body. But when we age, then we know what it's like. So therefore, while we still have strength and energy in our bodies, we use that. Having gained external wealth, we should also try to develop internal wealth as well. The wealth of sila, the wealth of samadhi, the wealth of a peaceful mind. And if our minds aren't peaceful, then we chant and do it a lot. We go through to be so 108 times. If we're traveling, then we go over that chant while we're traveling, bringing our minds to peace and to calm. Because when our minds are in a calm state, this becomes a cause for wisdom to arise. This wisdom knowing the truth of the Buddha's teachings. Something that normally we see anyway. And just like the world being something unstable and constant, we see that all the time but we just see it with the eyes of our flesh, these physical eyes. We don't see it through the eye of Dhamma. And everything that we observe, everything that we come to know in this life, it's all bound up with self. This birth, old age, sickness and death and everything that happens in between those points, it's all, we all take it personally in terms of self. So this is a view that is firmly embedded in our minds and something that is stubborn and won't change. But we need to try to change that, to abandon the sense of self so that our minds can separate from the sensations that they experience and that the internal nature of awakening can be born in our hearts. So therefore we try to build up merit we walk along this path of sila, samadhi, and panya. And this is the vehicle uh, that will bring us to understanding. It's the magayana that takes us to peace and to the land of happiness. This land of happiness is nibbana. It's something that we discover in our own hearts. It doesn't come up anywhere else. It doesn't exist anywhere else. All we have to do is really get our hearts to see anicca, dukkha, anatta, this inconstancy, stress, and not self, and we will see the Dhamma. So therefore, all of us should try to cultivate our bharamis, these spiritual perfections, walk along this path of sila, samadhi, and banya, that which will take us out of suffering, giving rise to liberation. So we all train ourselves in this way. And I give my anamodana to all of you who have traveled, some from close by and some from far away. Many people travel from Bangkok every weekend. 
you invite your friends to come along as well. And some people travel in from the city of Rayong and offer food in the morning every single day. It's very comfortable at home, but you make the effort to come out every day to offer food, seeing that this is a cause for internal joy and happiness, that we gain this joy through making merit. And when we accumulate merit, it's something that our hearts come to depend on. So just like yasa, uh, depended on listening to the Dhamma of the Buddha to attain to the Dhamma. And um, I actually went to India, to the place where Yasa attained uh, to the stage of Sotapanna and Arahant. And it was at 10.30 in the morning that we were there. And I saw a nimitta of Yasa come and he was spreading his kindness and compassion to us. So I asked for one of the lay supporters to take a photo. And what came out in the photo uh, was a bright white light um, that shone down uh, onto my head. So we see that his barami is still here. It hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, the barami of the arahants is still around. And the barami of the Buddha is still here as well. It's here in the Dhamma. So we should all put our efforts into building up our barami as well until we come to know the Dharma clearly within our own hearts. <laughs>